Okay guys, I'm here with Dr. Colin Wright. He's an evolutionary biologist and a fellow at the Manhattan Institute. Now you know a lot about what it is which makes a man a woman, a man a man, and a woman a woman. Even I get it wrong, Colin. <laughs> so can you explain it in the simplest terms to people? Yeah, you? yeah. I'm usually the person they go to when they ask the age old question, what is a woman that we're dealing yeah. with now? Yeah. Um, I mean, ultimately it comes back to biology. So people try to convince themselves that it has nothing to do with biology. It's all about identity and things like that. Yeah. But that's total BS. Um, basically, if you're to be a woman, you need to be an adult human female. So yes. uh, a mature person, biologically speaking, and a human member of the species Homo sapiens. Yeah. And a female, that's just uh, the sex that has the function of producing ova right. this is, or eggs. Yeah. And then for a male, for a man, it's just an adult human, uh, adult human male. A male being someone who has the biological function of producing mm. sperm. Okay, so that's the distinction between man and woman is the distinction between male and female, which is the distinction between producing small gametes, gametes. or sperm yep. or large gametes, which we call yeah. eggs. And that's that's really all there is to it. So okay, so <laughs> when I'm out on the streets, people say to me, "Well, what about those women that don't produce large gametes?" That's a big uh, objection you'll hear. So it's important to notice to note that you know you can have a biological function to do something yeah. without actually realizing that function or not being functional at the current moment. So um, you know you can have something like a car; it has a function of taking you to point A to point B, but your car can break, so sometimes it's not yeah. operational at the point. Um, but it still has a function. Yes. Okay, and so. People often will bring up, like, what about adolescent boys? They're not yet producing yeah. sperm until they go through puberty. Like, well, they still have testes, and those are the organs that have the function of producing sperm, even if they haven't uh, started producing yeah. them yet. You know, yeah. factories have a function of producing things. Things can go wrong in a factory, and they're not currently producing things, but they still have a function to produce stuff. Um, yeah. So that's kind of, I guess, the yeah. response oh, to that type of yeah, thing. Yeah, okay. And then the, th the, the next thing that people will say to me, well, what about those who are intersex? Yeah, so um, intersex people or people with BSDs, these are, if we want to just talk about people who are kind of ambiguous in their sex characteristics, um, I guess the important th point to make about them is that Sex ambiguity to the extent that it exists, and it's not really clear whether someone can be truly sexually ambiguous, because the way that human development works is the uh, pathways of going down, developing into a male or a female, they're like antagonistic, so um, it's, it's really hard to just cut it right in the middle. Yeah. But sex ambiguity isn't a third sex, because in order for there to be a third sex, you would have to have you know, the function to produce this unique third type of sex cell or gamete that is neither yeah. a sperm nor an yeah. ova. And so even if we were to hand and say, okay, some people might not have a well-defined sex, it doesn't mean they're a third sex. It doesn't yeah. mean sex is no longer binary. It just means that some people might be ambiguous in sex. And also this has nothing to do with the transgender debate at all, too. It's a completely yes. red herring Absolutely, because yeah. the people we're talking about, the people who are in women's sports or in women's spaces that we're all concerned about, they're just guys who identify as women. They don't have any diagnosable a medical condition or developmental issue. And so that's usually just a red herring to try to like stun you with a bunch of studies and things like that or case medical case studies to make you go like, oh, what is, what is biological sex? But we shouldn't fall for that bait. Yeah, think. okay. I'll, and finally, um, this is the fourth GenSpec conference now, is that correct? I believe it's the fourth. Is it yeah. the fourth? Yeah. Um, have you, you've come, you've been to a few before. I've been, yeah, I've been to all of them so yeah, far. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. What have you got from this seminar this year? Anything uh, new? I mean, or is it the there's, same? Old? There's always been a different feel to all of them. So the first one was in Killarney, Ireland, and we were just shocked that we were able to get a room full of people on this because before then we'd all just been on Twitter, yeah, just sort of mad scrambling to figure out what was even going on. You know, just what, what are these people saying? And so it was a moment of just like we were actually actually able to organize ourselves. There's an organization called Genspec that didn't exist, you know, just a couple years before. Um, and so we had like a launching off point to actually like, we're gonna start moving in this direction and use our collective power and the funding of an NGO to make, make strides. And then every GenSpec conference after that has been, you know, we're making more progress, we're making more progress. And I think this one, I, I think we're really seeing the tide actually start to turn a little bit against a lot of this crazy stuff. Partially because of, you know, the, the president, yeah. uh, you know, the administration has changed. It's, 
conducive to the stuff we want to do. It's 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 open to, to that type of change, um, and I think the morale is better just because we feel yeah. like we're winning, and it's it's a uh, yeah, it's it's a good feeling. Finally, yeah. where we feel like we actually have the power. We're not just on our heels playing defense. Like we're on offense now. Yeah. And that's I think the big change I feel at this conference. Excellent. Sure. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's been you. amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. Is there anywhere people can check you out online? Uh, just on, on X, my handle is at swipe right, right, W-R-I-G-H-T, or uh, follow my publication. It's www.realityslaststand.com. I write a bunch of stuff about sex and gender issues yeah. and other things as well. I subscribe to it, actually. <laughs> Thank you very much, yeah. Colin. Thank you so Cheers. much. Cheers. Thank you.